here we have two signals, X and Y, band limited to four and six kilohertz. And we're asked to find the Nyquist rate of different combinations of these two signals. So it would help to start by sketching the spectrum of each of these signals. Even though we don't know what these signals are like, it sh shouldn't prevent us from imagining their spectrum or the spectra. So this is a function of f. x is band limited to 4 kilohertz. So that means x only exists within this range from minus 4 kilohertz to 4 kilohertz. And y exists between minus 6 and 6 kilohertz. So these are just illustration, illustrations of what the spectra might look like. So the first question is about x of 3t. So that's called compression in time. So when you multiply the independent variable by t, that's called compression in time. And that corresponds to um, stretching in frequency. So that's the scaling property of the Fourier transform. So you can imagine that the spectrum of that, so if, if we were to write the Fourier transform, it would look something like this, x of 3t would correspond to 1 over 3, x of omega over 3. So the omega over 3, that's the stretching. That stretches the spectrum out so that we have a spectrum which is three times as wide. So instead of having 4, we'd have 4 times 3, and we'd have minus 4 times 3. So the spectrum is four or three times as wide. So the question is, what's the Nyquist rate? So the Nyquist rate isn't 3 times 4, it's twice that. So the Nyquist rate, let's just write the answer, let's say the Nyquist rate is equal to 2 times the 3 times the 4. That's 24 kilohertz. Now for B, we have the Y signal shifted in time by two seconds. So it's a, a shift in time. A shift in time doesn't change the spectrum. I mean, that just corresponds to an e to the minus j omega 2 multiplied by y of omega. That doesn't change the bandwidth. So the bandwidth remains the same. It remains 6 kilohertz. And therefore, the Nyquist rate would just be 2 times 6, which is 12 kilohertz. Now here, in C, we have the sum of two signals. Now, we don't care about these coefficients. What matters is the bandwidth. And the bandwidth of x and y we know to be 4 and 6, respectively. And remember, the rule of thumb is when you add signals together, you always look at the higher of the two bandwidths. So. When we add, we look for the higher of the two. And so that's like saying, what's the maximum of four and six? And that's six. So our Nyquist rate would simply be two times six, which is 12 kilohertz. So in this case, it doesn't matter what 
the signal x is because the bandwidth of y happens to be higher. Okay, for d we have the product of x and y. And remember we said the rule of thumb is when you multiply signals, you take the sum of the two bandwidths. So you'll take 4 plus 6 equals 10. And the Nyquist rate is twice that. And finally, when we have a convolution in time, that corresponds to a multiplication in frequency. And if you imagine, if you look back at the, uh, the spectra that we draw, drew originally, if you were to multiply the spectrum of x times the spectrum of y, you'll notice that the, um, the bits where x happens to be 0 will be multiplied by the spectrum of y, and the spectrum will become a little bit narrower. So when convolving, the effective bandwidth of the, pro of the um, convolution is the smaller the lower of the two bandwidths. So you'll want the minimum of 4 and 6 kilohertz. And the minimum of the two, in this case, is 4, the bandwidth of x. So the Nyquist rate would be 2 times 4 equals 8 kilohertz.